Hey, women's bobsledders are the best uh, for them. They finished ninth in the World Cup woman, or the World Championships for the women's competition. And Team Germany, well, you know, they're strong here again. Schneider, Heinz, Bertels, they were silver medalists at the, at the World Championships. And Lochner was a silver medalist also. We've got a different brakeman, Gregor Birnbach this time. Dave Grzeci rookie for Canada and rookie race winner Elizabeth Varchi with the Olympic champion Kaylee Humphreys. It's a strong lineup. In USA, number two, Kyle Tress leads things off, and a newcomer, uh, Henry for women's skeleton, Nick Cunningham, 12th place in the two-man competition, best for the US in two-man Bob. It's a sad day for Russia, but they have two teams, both will compete here. Yulia Kanakiva, the ex-ballet dancer, going off in their skeleton lineup. Great Britain, Dominic Parsons, this is a pretty good team. Laura Deese, Lamont Dean hopes to improve, uh, and he had chance to really do the finish in the top 10 in the men's competition and team usa man antoine he's the best of the four guys here steve holcomb he'll anchor this team and you know again they're the defending champions from 2013. and of course alana myers already has a gold medal from yesterday's women's race alexander kazinov wants redemption here alexander tretikov might win his first gold of the championships so 10 teams and lots of different action to get underway. This is mental arithmetic as much as anything else because you're adding and subtracting all the way down. The die is cast as far as the teams are concerned. The lineups are set. Lucian Yofro there will be with Victoria Ole. Don Parsons behind Tina Herman, runner-up in the Women's Skeleton World Cup. She goes for Germany on a warm afternoon. I should be good and fast, though. Silver medalist Anja Schneider Heinzer for Germany, getting her sled ready for the women's bobsleigh element of this team competition. And Kathleen Martini, little light relief for her last day on ice. Alexandra Rodjanova, Christina Hengster's break woman there, Sana Decker. They'll go in the second group of athletes. There's your world champion in women's bobsleigh, Alana Myers Taylor. She goes again with her teammate, Kathleen Martini, having hugs and smiles on her last day as a German world championship athlete. Here's our starting draw then. It's uh, Germany to lead off, Austria, Romania, and they will all go in the draw order through the first discipline, which will be men's skeleton. And from there on, the field is reset in order after each of our four legs or each of our first three legs so that the last team always goes off first and the leaders go last. Martin Haven, John Morgan, trackside at the start of this team world championships. Germany, the first team on ice with 2012 junior world champion Axel Jungs setting off to open the competition with men's skeleton. Well, he had a great World Cup season. And, you know, again, part of this young German program that they've tooled up. Got to know this track well. And again, this is the first time we've seen skeleton. You know, we're going to see the World Championships of men's and women's. The practice starts tomorrow. So this is a good chance for somebody. Now, the athletes that are competing in skeleton here will not get the same number of runs as the other athletes not Team competition. Oh, yeah, they they know that they had two runs uh, a couple of mornings ago. And one here, so they get they only get two less trips in practice. So it adds up to the same. 95.8 kilometers an hour is 59.6 miles an hour. Good form. Which you're gonna see great form on this track. It's very easy to get down. There's not a lot of rough transitions like we've seen in Altenburg or Cordexy, Lake Placid, or you know, this track's very smooth. Very easy to get down, but of course the people who get down the fastest. Jens Mueller, we haven't seen Jens all year. He's been on the development tour. Well, he's been around and about a couple of times. He's been at the World Cup races. Former Olympic, Olympic luge gold medalist yeah. in 1992 for Germany. Yes, yeah, stand out in their luge team. I think 88 for East Germany, come to think of it. Axel Jung then sets the benchmark, 57.13 slide. They trained in snowy conditions on Friday morning, though. Look at the head here. Look at the head bouncing. That's G-forces. And you hear, some, you hear it, you'll hear scratching. That's the chin dragging on the ice. But great form. I mean, very confident in where he's going there at 80 miles an hour. Yeah, he ought to be. He knows this track. So next up, then, is the second of our men's skeletons athlete. This is 30-year-old Matthias Guggenberger from Innsbruck, Austria. Next year, of course, the World Championships on the Eagles track, the Austrian team's home base. So this is a 12-month-in-advance warm-up. Oh, 
nice start time. 494 with the first one down. Actually, Young, he should have similar that before he got out of slight quickly there. Long drift to McCoy. Started wrong there. I mean, he didn't look too healthy in that run. He should have been closer than... Too tense down at the start. And a kilometre an hour slower into the first corner. It's going to be a long way back from there. Point four down. That speed is going to be missing all the way down this run. I think we check out World Cup. We're going to see him in a similar start time. Can actually go two tenths down. Maybe he's got an injury and he's just saving himself. But I don't know why he would do that. Austria's medal, I think, uh, the last World Cup team competition. I think it was held in the Eagles. Speed's better, 95-1, 59.1 miles an hour. And he's up a little bit. Ooh, rough transition there, so this is not smooth. Boy, he's six tenths down. That's an eternity of time on this track. Speed, he's about three kilometers down. Boy, almost a full second behind Martin Rattle, the coach. Martin, that was not a good start for your team here. It's going to leave them towards the bottom of the draw for the second element, which will be women's bobsleigh. Dana Hengster comes up for the women's bob for Austria. Yeah, she finished 11th in the Worlds yesterday. Well, Exeter Kreisel is supposed to come out of here with a slingshot effect, and he's supposed to come down the middle of the track. Toe comes out. And that wasn't smooth. And down here on the bottom part of the track, this is 10, 11, 12, late. You know, really sloppy run. We just said how easy it is to get down. I think he just made us look bad. Well, in fairness, he didn't crash. But so look, this is he not got the down, way. but no. That's, that may be the worst trip he's had in Winterberg in I don't know how long. And they still weigh the sleds. Yep. All the rules apply to normal FIBT competition. 28-year-old Romanian Dorian Veliku. He started to develop speed again this year. Such a tiny team of Romanians. They're present in all disciplines here in these World Championships. They do more with less. Their entire team is here in this team competition. There are no other members. Except for the four. Well, this is true. Okay, well, he should have a chance to beat up on the Austrians. 2600s behind the leader at the start, so oh, yeah, his start time is he got crushed at the start also. So uh, start I don't think Axel Young is that much better. I don't know, those were two really conservative starts right there. I think Axel Young had a good run. Yeah, yeah. I'm not sure that Matthias Guggenberg will be overjoyed with his. 95-4, that's got that speed quicker than Guggenberg. He might close the gap and challenge for second spot ahead of the Austrians. Yeah, I think he will. Guggenberg at 0.84 back at the line. This Ooh, could be big, very big, close big, indeed. Boy, so wild 300s run. behind. That was some wild run in the finish, though. Let it fly. 127-3 at the bottom. So 1.3 kilometers now quicker than Matthias Guggenberger. That came very close to overturning the Austrians. The finish curve was pretty wild. Oh, he's starting to get stuck. He's looking down, maybe. He didn't feel the sled running free in the grooves. This is in 10, but boy, in the finish curve, he went up and down on a big W. His helmet design looks like a 1960s American football gridiron helmet. Something about that, just those stripes down the center. Here it is, he goes way down in the finish. Yeah. He goes way back up, great pictures here. Look wow. at this, he goes way up in no man's land. There's nobody else but up there uh, in the whole 10 days of the World Championships. Well, next up is reigning junior world champion, Christopher Grode here from Germany. The 22 year old won the title a couple weeks back. Junior champion in Altenburg, Germany. Good start, like his teammate. He gets a wild card entry to the World Championships, which means Germany can appoint another athlete to fill his regular spot. And this is an athlete to challenge. Only 900s of a second back. Skeleton, anything can happen in the remaining run. Yeah, 500s at the start down, and the 900s, that's equal. Now it's down to six. Ooh, he stopped the bleeding, and this looks like he has a chance to overtake the lead. Yeah, faster than Axel Young. 95.8 was Young's speed below corner nine. 96.3, half a kilometer now quicker. He'll be in the lead. He's the got the lead. 128.3 for Junk, 128. What? 
128-2. Out of 200. This could be a tie between the two German teams. Now that would be entertaining. 300 of a second. Dirk Bashers on the right. He's the, one of the coaches. From German Slider. Yeah, from Ilmenau, a town just outside of Oberhof that has produced more sliders, that one town, and more medals than any other in Germany, he told Lugin me. Bob. And Lugin Skeleton. and Skeleton. Look yeah. at him leave his, look at this, he left his hands totally in the air and then reached over. You're going to see some beautiful athleticism as these skeleton athletes launch onto their sleds. Many different styles. Not everybody will be perfect. Good Start here into that zero curve. Here's our junior world champion. Double junior world champion. Axel Jung was a junior world champion as well. Germans have been dominant in men's skeleton for a while. Now then, Dave Kajeshin of Canada, 33-year-old globe-trotting teacher. Chris. Yeah. Kajeshin, a World Cup rookie this season. Entirely self-funded, the Canadian skeleton program. If you want to go, you've got to pay. He, he had a rough launch onto the sled. It was a little. Probably the biggest guy in competition, which should help him out. But he's size-wise like Jeff Payne. Maybe not as, Jeff Payne's a little thinner. Tom Gibson a little shorter, but she does have the same profile. That mass always helps. It means you're accelerating less at the start because you carry more on your frame. He's been to Winterberg several times, raced in the uh, Intercontinental Cup and the European Cup, the tiers below World Cup, the, the top of sliding. He wants to stay close. He's got a good team coming up behind him. Elizabeth Bacci. Speed is as good as the Germans, 95.6. Stays within 15 or 20 hundreds. Oh, he's plus four tenths back, and he's rough transitions on the bottom. Speed, 126 kilometers. Well, again, they train in a lot of falling snow, so this is very different from the track they were on on their only two training runs. Normally before a race, you'll have half dozen. I bet you these are much faster times than the yeah. training. Yeah, long way faster, and totally different runners required. So the feel is completely different. Watch them get on the sled here. Watch them right foot over the left side of our screen. Watch what happens. He overshoots the landing here. <laughs> Look at the last step. And... Ooh! Looks like the back end of... Look at the runners up out of the yeah. ice. Yeah. That was not smooth. I'll see if his toe comes down. Landed on the edge of the no. saddle, so that's going to hurt there as well. Their toe comes down. Yeah. I don't think... We, if we're going to get points for landing there, like a... He's not going to get much for artistic impression, I'm afraid. No. <laughs> Germany 1 2, 300 apart. Canada lie third, halfway through the first element of our team's world championship. Five of our ten teams already down in the first element of four of this team's world championship in Winterberg, Germany. Men's skeleton, the first discipline. Toffee Latour holding the sled for Kyle Tress, the 33-year-old. Want to push off against his fellow athletes. Just a couple weeks ago to get the second spot in the world championship squad for US skeleton. The first was predetermined for Olympic bronze medalist Matt Antoine. A little hold up here on the track. Everybody looking at the monitors to try and see if they can see a suggestion as to why there is a hold on the track. Answers on the postcard, please. There's a number of athletes say they sing to themselves on the block. Jane Channel always does. She said different song every time. Well, that's the mental preparation yeah. that you go through and uh, clear your mind. Any lip readers give us a clue as to what the words are, what the lyrics of what song? Because once you start this, it's it's muscle memory. It's... But of course, the other deal here is there's no second heat as there would be in a regular race. There was a cup in the track, not a trophy-style cup. Probably a Velton's cup. <laughs> Little plastic cup. So we are ready to go. That was a caution for debris. Carl Tress sets off, fastest start so far, 494 of Axel Junk. Christopher Groh here leads on a 499, 510 for Carl Tress. Speed, 62.8, not bad for last Kyle, a good team here he's working with. Jamie Gruber Poser, Laura Gibbs come up next. Nick Cunningham is their uh, anchor. 
first time we're ever going to see Nathan Henry. The speed is ebbing away from 1100s behind at the start, 3700s back already in fourth place. So he's behind the Germans and the Canadians. 95.2. That's decent speed. Oh, that's that. You talked him up. Good form, he said. Sometimes they good form. He was almost off the sled. Speed at the bottom, looking for high 126s, 126.2s. Not going to help too much with the well, gap at the lose bottom. Some time yeah. on the bottom. He lost 1800s. If that's the way Kyle's going to slide the four heats of the World Championships, I don't promote him into the top ten. That was a, the worst exit we've seen of nine yet. But of course, he's sliding in a little different conditions than he did in training. Here today. Yeah. Watch this. Up near the woodwork comes down. He okay, brought it down too early, and watch what happens. Centrifugal force right at us, up on the woodwork. Making the same sort of, sort of steer that he would have done in training, but then there was much more grip on the ice. Yeah. And as a result, he got much more turn than he wanted. What do they call that? Spider? What do they the call it? The scorpion legs. Scorpion when yeah. your legs go out like that, and that hurts. Yeah. That can really damage your back. Next up, 31-year-old Russian Sergei Chudinov, fifth in the Olympic Games in Sochi. He's been in and out of the World Cup squad this year, depending on what Alexander Tretyakov and the others have been doing. it back in amazingly but all his speed was gone there because he's trying to hold himself back and grab the sled 5.93 now you're going to see the jury start to look at that and remember this is really warm out right now temperatures and of course they've been down with the bobsled competition all day uh, 53 sleds come down for bobsledding another 10 pilot sleds 63 sleds down but that start track up there i think they're going to start looking at it because for him to come out of those games that easy he wasn't even over the edge coaches were saying this morning before the start of the two-man finale so that, that it was really dug up and that the track at the top didn't seem to be spritzed and cleaned up But he, he, that's, that's not even a training run start. He, that's almost jogging off because he's injured. The speed is... See the speed at the bottom, 126.4 is quicker than Kyle Tress. But the time he lost from that start... Yes. Yeah. Tough day for the Russians all the way around. Yes, it has. A heavy heart among not just the Russians, but everybody else. But this won't be helping. His hands over the runner in the groove as well. Right it there. just tracks right out. Boy, oh boy, they came out of there so easy. Usually on the crest is where you see this happen. Yeah. I think he was out before the crest. Now look at this. Now you, you look think at him about steering pulling, it. Pulling a groin muscle there. Look at him. You talk about a scorpion. He is steering it to try and get it back in the grooves. And look what happens when he lands. Pop. It's going to break up the groove, though. 2.48 seconds down. Yeah. He should be at the worst 0.48 seconds down. So that'll he's that's half destroyed the groove. Now, Don Parsons of Great Britain in the other groove, the left-hand side as they look at it on his Bromley sled. No! Bromley sponsored athlete. 27-year-old is a very fast starter. Let's see if he can get Great Britain into the medal contention. Third fastest start. There you go. Zero curve, though. He had a little bit. Get there late. Come on, tap. I don't know how much of a pressure on the in skeleton that he does bobsled. 62.9 is the third fastest speed in that first corner. The Germans were both quicker. He's lying third on splits. Taller guys like Grizz the Canadian, but not as thick as him. 91 1. Both Germans went quicker. So did Dave Kachechen. He's 95. So he's got 96 kilometers an hour. He could close towards the bottom of the track. This looks like top three to me. Meets 127s, 128. What's the Bromley sled got in it? 128 flat. That's big speed. Third place, but how far back at the line? Three, three tenths, halfway between the top two, the Germans and the Canadians. Well, there's. If you could deliver your sled to the bottom and leave yourself in the top three, that's what you want to do. Well, this that's is exactly like a sprint relay. You, your leg has to be the best it can humanly be. You can't win the event in the first round, but you could certainly lose it like the Russian just did. Yep. 
Here we are in 10, dragging his toes there. Look at the lines, look at this, 80 miles an hour. Look how high he is in the wall. He comes off the sled, look at him. Ooh, that was a little loose. Yep, shoulder on the ice. Down. Good Not drive bad. with the sled, but Don Parsons, third place for the Great Britain team. Two to go in this first of four disciplines here in Winterberg. Matt Antoine, the Olympic bronze medalist from the USA. 29-year-old from Prairie du Chien, Wisconsin. Bronze medalist at last year's Sochi Winter Olympic Games, and this is a bit of a strong lineup here as well. Come on, six, 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 six. Matt should be low fives. Be high fours here. Yeah, needs to be challenging the Germans. Both the Germans dip below five seconds. 504, that's where they need to be. Speed, 63.3, good speed. Yeah. Now we'll see if he can deliver the goods for his USA number one team that includes Alana Myers Taylor coming up next, and then Andy O'Shea, and then Hulk. He is right on the money, only six hundredths of a second behind. This was a couple of the athletes that were on that world championship team in 2013, yes. the team competition in Saint Moritz. So. Antoine is doing everything to keep the Germans under pressure. Only 18 hundredths of a second back. 95 7, not the best speed we've seen. He needs 128 at the bottom, high 128 if he can. 27-3, this is gonna put him in a close race with the Brits. Yes, it will, he'll be in third. Fourth. Oh, fourth place, 400's behind. Well, he lost a lot of time Ooh. on the bottom part of the track. Well, that sets up Alana Myers-Taylor to move them back into medal contention in the second heat. Yeah, but still, I think he needed to do a little bit better than that. Like every hundredth counts. We've seen some of these team competitions come right down to the hundredth yep. final sled. And skeleton is where more difference happens than in the bobsled at the top. Yeah, definitely. the USA won the World Championships in 2013. Look at these beautiful pictures. Look at the stride that he's got. But the USA won the World Championships with Noel Pike's pace blowing away the rest of the field by almost 7,500s. That was the big difference. Look at Matt's onto the sled very comfortably. Looking pretty relaxed, Matt Antoine. Next up, lots of noise for the Russians. This is the Russian rocket, the Olympic champion, the world champion, could Alexander Trechikov. 80s, could be in the 80s. 481, oh man, what is the start record? While you look for that, 64 kilometers an hour. Okay. Russia, I think going to want to stay here. Three tenths up. It's going to be four tenths in the next clock. And the rest of the way down. He three. could lead by seven or eight tenths of a second. And he's, he's doing nothing. 91.5. Germans, 91.3 and 91.6. 96 speed from the Germans. He's got three tenths for lead. I think he got five seconds. Ooh, 96.3. He's as quick as anybody. 128 for the Russian rocket. Once the Willy Schneider sled got in it, 32 hundreds. 128, fastest speed we've seen. He's going to lead off the first heat for Russia by three tenths. Wow, well, Tretikov's done his bit, hasn't he? Well, you expect it with that start time. He was way ahead of everybody at the start. I mean, this, the 1800s better at the start to grow here from Germany and only 32 at the bottom. So I think the, I think the Germans hung in there against the Russian rocket. I thought he was going to be five tenths ahead. Well, three tenths in front, 32 hundreds up. Tight battle for the other medals between Germany one and Germany two who are in second place at the moment. And Great Britain in fourth. Take long for this. It's the current leader. And here's Russians. Alexander Trechikov coming down. This was the highlight of our first 10 sliders, a Russian in the lead and a Russian in last. Well, the Russians didn't even figure in the medals in the last World Championship team competition in Samaritz in February 2013. They lead after the first of four disciplines here, and there's the advantage that Alexander Tretiakov has given them. Germany 2 lead Germany 1 by a hair's breadth. There's going to be lots of intrigue further on down the order. Russia 2 having a disaster with Sergei Chudinov hanging out last. So, reset now, and the field will go with 
Russia two going first and Russia one going last. So they bookend the table. And the next discipline is the two women bobsleigh. And you've got to look at the USA as being the fastest team in that with Alana Myers Taylor, surely. And she's got her brakeman, normal brakeman, Sherelle yep. Garrett on. So they're going to try and go for double gold. Yeah, Sherelle's, <laughs> Sherelle's feeling pretty good after yesterday's race. There's Jamie Grubel Poser. Yep. She'll be the first sled off for the in the U.S. first U.S. team we're going to see. Oh no, we go last to first, so the yes, Russians right. will be the first the ones Russians up. will be the first team we see, but you're right, Jamie Grubel Poser in USA 2. Following on after Kyle Tress. So it's 10 to 1, last to first to, for the rest of the way now for the second, third, and fourth heats. The first one was a draw. They drew your name out of a, or your team yeah. out of a hat. So the team competition, they're aspiring for this event to be into the Winter Olympic Games in Pyeongchang, Korea. I think it's got a great opportunity to be a real crowd pleaser, and the athletes love it as well. It's just a little bit of fun, no pressure, but in the end, there are world championship medals as well. And of course, as soon as the visor comes down on the helmet, John, it's deadly serious. Yeah, we had 16 teams in the competition in uh, 2011 at Koenigsee. Uh, and usually it's about 12 or 13 teams. This year we have a couple down. Of course, the Swiss aren't here because of the accident last week in yep. St. Moritz. But the uh, teams know the world championship medals that's been staged every year for the last six years, the team competition. And, and again, there's a lot of pride amongst the athletes in this, this whole scenario. It's a great opportunity for some of the alternate break men and break women to get a, a real shot at a world championship medal as well. And uh, a number of the teams are doing that, using alternates to keep their uh, number one guy or girl ready for more action. Well, for the women's bobsledders, their season is over on this yeah. run. So, you know, a lot of Myers. Here, here's what's coming up. Well, the women's bobsledders, Kathleen Martini's last ever drive with Lisette Turner behind it, Christina Hengster for uh, Austria. Jamie Grubel Poser looking for a big result here, maybe to put the US in the medals. And Alana Myers Taylor, she has got to be the pace setter here, the world champion. First person ever outside of uh, German, uh, uh, non German, to win a world championship gold medal in Winterberg. And the first US women bobsledder to win a world championship gold. And there's the order they'll go in. Russia two start, and Russia one will go last. 10 to 1, according to time in the first discipline. First discipline, of course, was men's skeleton. Then the second discipline is women's bobsled. The third discipline is women's skeleton. And they finish off with two men bobsled. Winterberg, Germany, the second of four disciplines in the team's world championship. Russia 2 lying in 10th spot after the first heat. And that means they go first into the second. Nadia Segeva kicks off the action with the women's bobsleigh. Yulia Shokshava behind her. They were 13th in yesterday's women's world championship. The negotiation of curve zero, something that was not easy for the women's bobsledders in perfect conditions that they had. There's a lot of problems with that zero curve. We're calling it the hassle curve. All the Russians sliding with heavy hearts. They sat news overnight that one of their head coaches was un unexpectedly passed away, Alexander Shlegovkovsky. They're all lucky to slide. Well, I think probably that's exactly what every other nation would have done. The slide in his honor. First person down. What was nice Bobby's looking run. It's a cumulative time, so. They have to work with the negligent time that Chudna posted a moment in the red skeleton because he came out of the grooves at the start. But, uh, They're going to have to excel themselves to get out of 10 spot, that's for sure. 58.03 run. So that is first position at the moment for Team Russia 2. Not a bad transition there comes over, maybe gets out a little bit too early. And it's all about speed into the finish. Now you can see how your sled starts to go travel uphill there. And in that finish curve, you can lose a lot of time going up in that uphill section. Well, the second of our teams after the first heat is Romania. Maria Konstantin and Andrea Greco. Now these girls had a standout world championships, ninth place 
really punching above their weight. They won the Europa Cup Championship this season as well, the second da. tier of sliding in women's box lane. And they were certainly da. enjoying da. the moment da. yesterday afternoon. deserve to be big stars back home this week. They really have put Romanian bobsledding back on the map. Great load of game from Angia Greco, getting those long levers in the sled. Huge lead over the Russians, but that's related to the bad skeleton time that she was supposed to when he came out of the groove to start. Well, they're only 700s behind the USA number two team. So this is a great opportunity for the Romanian bobsled girls to try and claw their way up the order. Let's come back a little bit. Well, the Russians 90.5 at that stage, the Romanians 92.2. Oh, she's pulled away now. This is an ex Andre Langer sled. She said it feels like a sports car compared to our old sled, but it's 2006 vintage, so it's already eight years tired. She said it still feels like a wonderful piece of equipment. Well, it didn't serve Andre Langer too badly. What did he win in 2006? Yeah! Quite a lot. <laughs> Paul the Ego on the right. 57-81, that's a really good run. That's, yeah, that's two good tenths quicker better. than the Russians. That lays down a bit of a marker for Jamie Grubel, Poser, and Lauren Gibbs, who come up next. In fact, we're not. We've got Christina Hengster first of Austria. Nine to 10. She's trying to get over here early. Not bad. Then she gets on at the curve 10. She's low. Now watch the slight climb a little bit. Keep her eye on the runner tips there. You can see her making their little slight steering adjustment to get off the curve. So, Maria Constantin, Andrea Greco leading for Romania at the moment. Next up then, Christina Hengster of Austria with 21-year-old Dutch girl Sanna Decker behind her. They finished 11th in the world, so they were slower over four heats than the Romanians. Let's see if they can find a little bit of pace. Now, they're using a different, different sled. sled. They're using Benny Meyer's sled rather than the one that they used themselves. Really? Well, maybe she's gone back to her old sled. But that is definitely not the matte grey, primate, nasty-looking device that they used in their Women's World Championship. Yeah, this is a totally different sled. I'm surprised. I'm still trying well, to make a which other She did say she was trying, she's struggling, Benny. struggling to get the feel for the it's other one. It's not no. Benny Byers' sled. No, because he's got a borrowed German sled. Yeah, he's got, he's got with the stripes on it. So the ridge up the side of it. Yeah, so this is, uh, I think this is her old sled then she's gone back to. Maybe she'll find the feel. Uh, 800. This is a very close battle with the Romanians. Out of four. Let's go right to the oh, here we the go. Second. What did the Romanians have in terms of speed? 131-1. Oh, yeah, better speed, 200s. The Austrians barely hold on. Yeah. That sends up an interesting little battle there, doesn't it? So the Romanians came down 57-81. The Austrians 57-82. Their 300s advantage shrunk by 100. So That's yeah. her old sled. Yeah. Bob Team Hengster. Yes, so you're right. Two different sleds from day to day. Didn't have a chance to practice with this all week. So they're still searching for equipment that works. Well, good run in, down cleanly before curve zero. Look at the arms come up. Brakeman Decker did a nice job there technically. And I guess in preparation for Eagles, the World Championships next year, they've back to back their two different sleds on the same track in World Championship conditions. That's good information. Well, just a whisker in front of them were Team USA 2, Kyle Tress, the lead out man in the men's skeleton and in the women's bobsleigh, Jamie Grubel poser, and behind her, Lauren Gibbs. Couple Ivy Leaguers. Lauren Gibbs new to the team this year. And all their break women have had what, by anybody's standards, has been a bit of a baptism of fire to bobsledding. They came in, they knew it was going to be a bit cold, a bit bumpy. And then they had a real bumpy road in oh, Altenburg yeah. and Koenigsee. I think there was like 17 crashes amongst the U.S. team in those two weeks. But they recovered nicely until 
Good friend of a lot of Myers Taylor. There's something else yeah. on the track here. It's Matt, okay, it's good, he said. Manny, the uh, head of the jury, just again asking what's going on. Hold on, they're saying at the top. Jack hold for something. There's a few leaves on the line, but that shouldn't make too much of a difference. Just checking for debris down the track. It's getting a little gusty during the course of the day today. Very gusty. Track hole. Okay, so a two minute track hole. The athletes are back in the warm in the start box. Crowd still stayed here. Uh, yeah. yeah. Fueled up by Bratwurst and Glühwein, why wouldn't you? <laughs> Lots there at the start area. In case you're saying just up behind that camera shot, right by the sleds where they're on the line, there's now a whole load of Perspex sheets and the sled said it used to be like a bear pit there, the coaches were saying. So noisy. He said, now nah, it feels a little bit underwhelming, maybe. Not for the athletes. As soon as they get moving, though, they hit the roar of noise. So Jamie Grew will pose it with the helmet bag still over her visor to try and stop it misting up in the cold air. See the reflection of FIBT president Hugo Ferriani in the glass as the coaches wait to put the sled on the ice. And the reason it's not on the ice the whole time is the runners would get colder. And colder runners don't melt the ice quite as quickly as warmer runners. Getting ready to resume this second leg of the team's competition. Jamie Grubel Poser and Lauren Gibbs of the USA. They're getting the countdown to when the sled can go on the ice. They were fifth in the Women's Bobsleigh World Championships that finished on Saturday afternoon here in Winterberg. And they currently lie in seventh place in this team's world championships with their teammates. It was six at the end of the first run. The Kyle Tress was their men's skeleton who took them down the track. Sixth out of the 10 sleds. Come on, come on, Lord. come on. Two Ivy Leaguers will try and position the United on. States to move up. Volleyball player in the back and a heptathlete in the front. Cornell of Brown University. 5.71. Decent start. Jamie wasn't very happy with her first day in the competition. She moved up. The second day, two better heats. We had her teammate Jasmine Fellrader. Well, they produced the fastest start of this leg of the competition so far. As you can expect, multiple times. Podium this year, only the accident codex he left her on. I should have been the top three World Cup. Good speed from Jamie Grubel Poser. She's accelerating away from the field. She's looking to pick the USA team to up a spot or two here. This is good lines. One might be doable, two might be a bit of a tall ass, but she's got speed. There's a teammate, Kyle Dress, current leaders, Christina Hengster and Sana Decker. Pretty good time, 57, 57 5. 53. That's a good run. Good run, right. <laughs> Kyle Tresk, stay in the leader's box there. Yeah, the Austrian girls laughing it up down in the finish area. Well, they'll move out of the leader's box. Jamie Grubel Poser and Lauren Gibbs will move in along with Kyle Tress. It's going to start getting crowded down there in a while. Yeah, it's sort of fun. It's a collection. <laughs> the athletes go from the sledders coming down to the leader's box and can't quite get the handles out to roll it over. This is uh, the Kreisel. Looks like a good line. Let's see if she staggers that blue dot. We won't see that, but she definitely gave the U.S. a little bit more of a cushion to work with. There. Yes, she did. Carlo Valdez helping with the sled at the bottom. Kelly Humphreys, the Olympic champion in women's bobsledding. And Kate O'Brien didn't compete in the last World Cup race. She was competing for Canada, though, 
in the Track Cycling World Championships. What a busy month she's been having. She was in Paris last week competing in the World Cycling Championships. They just jaunted over here. She was in South America before, uh, I think, in January before she flew into Eagles. So you're talking about a dual sport athlete. She takes her bikes with her on yeah. the plane. Yeah. She has a, a training rig that she has in the hotel room. Talk about pressurized lifestyles. She's got a lot of focus on the Pan American Games, which are in Toronto next year, 2016. So she's a multiple sport athlete that'll be pretty busy in the next couple of years. And you know what else is coming up in 2016, of course, as well, in Rio de Janeiro. She'll be, she'll be aiming for the Olympic Games. Great numbers all the way, as expected. She was 2,900 up at the start, but she's lost time to Jamie Grubel Poser all the way down the track. Lost a tenth of a second on that run to her. Jamie Grubel with the better time. And but, but USA Canada, USA 2 and Canada are a little closer. What's interesting is to compare how fast the various different disciplines in. Dave Krajecian, 57.65 slide, and Kelly Humphreys, 57.61. Only four hundreds between the bobsled and men's skeleton. That's pretty cool. And he had a bit of a wild ride as well. He could have been a little quicker. Look at Kelly's eyes, barely above the cowlick. She's got that visor, those goggles with a different look. She looks a little late here in the crossover, though, between... 10, 11, into the bottom part of 12, 13, 14. Nevertheless, the Canadians hold their lead. Five sleds down, five to come in the second element of this team's world championships. Come on, girls, come on. Canada lead, USA second, and next up is your newly crowned world championship duo, Alana Myers Taylor and Shirelle Garrett for the USA. Trying to push the USA one team into the medals. They were in fifth place after the first of four heats. Well, they set the track record at the start in the first run. Yesterday's competition, or the Thursday's competition. That's a little slower than any of their world championship starts. They started 48s and 49s. Smooth out of curve four. Pivotal part of the track. Well, she's got a huge lead here, almost a half second. Good speed. She really dominated the performance. She only got beat by in one heat, the final heat, and Andrew Schneider Heinz beat her by two hundreds. And in her four heats, there was no more than five hundredths of a second difference between the fastest and the slowest. A lot of my Taylor on fire here. Her oh, well, she's on flying. One. It's a lot of time right there. See Dave Gajeshi, Kate O'Brien, and As away from Kaylee Humphreys. Woo! That's a big, big lead. As expected, the world champion delivers the goods for the United States. And Gives them a six tenths lead over the Canadians, but of course, this is only for fifth place. However, if that's not the fastest run in this group of women's bobsledders, I will be very surprised. Yeah. We yeah. still have Kathleen Martini and Arne Schneiderheit, so the other medalists to come, yeah. 57 63. What was the time? 57. It was uh, fifth, uh, uh, 57 19. Yeah. So, crossover into the finish. Looks like she gets pushed away a little bit. Again, a couple of tenths slower the track today than it was yesterday. Yesterday was such a blinding day. Weather was stunning. Next up is Great Britain, Team Great Britain with 31-year-old Londoner Victoria Ole. Lucy Onyeforo on the back of the sled. She's the alternate, 30-year-old sprinter. Her coach, you might know his name, Linford Christie, the Olympic gold medalist at 100 meters. She's got a lot of running experience. Oh, oh bad news problems. for Team GB. So that's going to knock them back. They're going to knock them down to the cover from that. We saw what happened to Chutnov. He ended up two seconds down because of that start this happened. You know, they might have just ran like one step too far. I think he couldn't get a hold of the D-rings quick enough. Now she's got to forget that that ever happened and just be calm and chilled all the way down. Because the only thing that's going to happen is you can make it worse. You yeah. can't make it better. Yeah. Shooting off, of course. We still saw him with good speed in the bottom yeah. part of the track, so you can recover some of the Yeah, if you, the don't, if you don't fight the sled, the speed will come through gravity. If you fight the sled, you just wipe off. 
48. So this is going to move it back five spots. Wow. Good day for Great Britain. Seventh best time of seven. Puts him in sixth. The British coaches can look on and just go, what well, have we done wrong? Because they had a rough time with Lamont Dean. Yeah, tough time for Vicky Ole. She was 12th after two heats. Slipped to 15th in the final runs. Well, look at the grooves. See how far they run. One, two, three, four, five. Steps in. Right. They're out of the grooves right here. And Vicky has still not got her hands on the steering gear. So look at the way she gets now. it. She's getting it on a tilt. And that, as she tilted to the left, pulled the sled to the left, and sayonara there. You didn't have to see the runner tips there. That was the, that's what they her, call Robin watch, Hooding it. Watch her try and correct there. Snatched maximum steering application to try and avoid the wall, all too little. Uh -oh. Three to go then in this women's bobsleigh element of the team competition. And we preempted it yesterday, her last. This is the women's race, but this is the last one wow. for Kathleen Martini. Last of her career. She was so thrilled yesterday with the bronze medal. She said, I started my world championship career with a bronze medal, then with Yvonne Sonota, who sadly passed away a few years ago in a boxing accident. She said, I finished it with a bronze medal. I'm very, very happy. And you genuinely believe she was. And Lisa Turner. Long time stalwart. She's from here. She's yeah. from Winterburn. She's the girl who has the honor of riding with Kathleen for the very last time. Well, you know you're going to see some good moments here. She did the wow. World Championships with deficient start to that. She probably had the best lines down the track. Well, she laughs. She said, you have to be fast at the bottom here. You have to be fast at the top. I wasn't fast at the top, but I was fast at the bottom. She was 1100. Now it's 1900. She's pulling away. She is having a great final oh, weekend she's here. Flying here. Wild, wow. but she's letting it fly. She's opening up the margin on Alana wow. Myers Taylor. Wow, was that a great run? From 1400s back to 2900s in front, Robert. So Alana only beat her by 200s at the bottom. Yeah. Outstarted her by 1700s at the top, but only beat her by 200s at the bottom. That, if they win a medal, that's going to be because of Kathleen Martinez. Yeah. She fought off Kathleen. She equalized. She, yeah, she neutralized the, the world champion. Yeah, she that's exactly and that's right. what you want to do. In your discipline, you want to just neutralize the best. And she did that. Yeah. Good crossover here. 11, 12, 13 at the bottom. Good little, speed. little wild, but she let the sled fly, and that's what you got to do. Still lots of green of Saxony in the crowd. Lots of appreciation for the 15 year old, 15 year career of. Kathleen Martini. Well, next up, after the bronze medalist and the gold medalist from yesterday, is the silver medalist, 36-year-old Anja schneider Heinzer. She's got 29-year-old Franziska Bertels on the back of the sled. Bertels, a world championship medalist with Sandra Kiriasis. Oh, she's a veteran. She's been around. That's great technique. She did, but she lays beautifully. 5.61. Good, good start time. The velocity 61 7. The fastest start, the 55 from Alana Myers Taylor and Sherelle Garrett, but that puts them in and swinging. And she's already, already negating some of that start advantage that the Americans had. She's chasing down Catherine Martini now, and she's pulled away. 19 22. Should extend down here. 92.8, best speed we've seen quickly in the American sled. Back there, back down to 14. 98.3, equal fastest. Let's see how clean she gets here at 13. This is her silver medalist in the women's bobsleigh. Speed's coming down. This is going to be four or 500s probably in the bottom. So what a job Kathleen Martini did. 57.9, that's exactly the same time as Alana Myers Taylor set. And of course, Schneider Heinz are the only woman to beat Alana Myers Taylor down the track this week. She beat her in the final heat to end with a silver medal and a track record. And now she. This is going to get interesting. Yeah, this between the next, German teams, the and Americans. The and the yeah, Russian coming and, down here. Yeah. It's going to come down. I think the Germans, I think, are going to win gold. I think silver. we might have a German one or two after this. I think we're going to have the Russians and Americans going to come down to Holcomb and Kasanov, just like it did at the Olympic Games yep. for the bronze medal position. Those two guys are going to square off. 
Well, Germany think. took silver in the last Team Worlds in Samaritz, but they're 1-2 at the moment. Our last women's bobsledder, Alexandra Rodjanova. And Nadja Paleva, her brave woman. 29-year-old having a very tough week with bad news from home and in the camp this week. 577, but they've got 1600 to the bank. Look at the speed, 61 to change, 61 to 3. So it's going to come down probably 10 hundreds in the green. The next clock. Eight. Whoa. So she's got to stop the bleeding here. She keeps it within 10, 15 hundreds in the red at the bottom. She's done her job. Should be red here pretty quick. Not five. That's, that's not bad. She hasn't bled that much time away. And Kreisel. She's got the rouge line. She knows how to get down the track. She's been on the track probably for 15 of the World Cups here. Look at this, she's pulling back away. Yeah. This is great. She's keeping the Russia one in contention. Well, contention, they could be in the lead. It's going to be down to a few hundreds of a second. Wow, this is a great run. What are you talking about? Her? It might be 100, 200. Where is she? 200. 200 of a second. Well, she can stand up and say, I did my job as well. Boy, she did. She really, that was impressive. I thought she was going to be 30, 40 hundreds down here at the bottom. She did not. She held on. You know, it was really nice to see her 5 hundreds, and then it went to 6 hundreds up and only two at the bottom. So she really fought off the Germans, both yeah. of the German sleds, the silver and bronze medalists. She fought them off on the bottom part of the track. Well, she lost three tenths, but they had a big lead from Alexander Tretyakov, and so it is still Germany, Germany, and Russia in the battle. Five hundreds of a second cover the top three teams. Anja Schneider Heinzer, the silver medalist yesterday, setting the fastest run and putting her team, Germany one, back into the lead. Germany two, I beg your pardon, back into the lead. Yeah, Kirsten Grothier did his job in skeleton. And now Anja Schneider Heinz did her job. And the further on it goes, the more pressure on your teammates when you've got yourself into that position. Germany, Russia, Germany. That's the battle for the medals with the USA, Canada, fourth, fifth, and sixth. So after Sergei Chudinov popped the grooves and Vicky Ole hit the short wall at the start, Russia 2 and Great Britain are battling for the honor of not being last. Any chance of being in the medals has completely vanished for those. No mistakes allowed. There's Don Parsons and at the top of the track. <laughs> Lovely. Uh, you see a lot of the skeleton sliders, Japanese sliders, British sliders. And out there supporting their teammates, of course, the Skeleton World Championships in action next week. Training starts for them on Monday. Wonder what the weather will bring for the race days. Rose McGrandall and Ed Smith up watching. They've already seen their teammate Don Parsons. Yeah, pretty interesting setup. Mm -hmm. The well, crowd still stayed on for the competition. Well, luckily it stopped raining and yeah. stopped snowing, and that really helps because, you know, yesterday you, you were trying to get them out of here with a cattle prod. There were so many people hanging around in stunningly sunny weather. It was a tourism day, that was for sure. It properly was. It was absolutely heaving. Well, the town was heaving with Dutch people on vacation. It's their school vacation, so all the families were in town with toddlers skiing and absolutely perfect ski conditions. Well, this track's really well situated. We're only a couple of hours from anywhere in the Ruhr Valley, a couple of hours from the Low Countries. There was coach loads of Belgians came down to support the Belgian Bullets, over 300 of them, and they were all leaving at 8 o'clock or so last night. So a long day for them. They all have left home at 6, got home at midnight, but it was worth it to come to the World Championships. Lots and lots of fans, young and old, with heroes young and old as well, from... Christopher Grote here. Welcome back to Winterberg in Germany. We're halfway through our team's world championship. And here is how they will go off in the skeleton. Germany won with Tina Herman, World Cup champion Janine Flock representing Austria. New girl Megan Henry, no World Cup starts for her. She fought away into the US team for the skeleton worlds. Well, there are 10 nations. 
They'll go in reverse order, which means that Russia too are first on the ice ahead of Great Britain. We go down to our lead battle, which is three teams separated by 500. Martin Haven and John Morgan alongside me, watching the action here from Winterberg in Germany's Hochstauerland. Perfect conditions for the competition. We've seen some great times. I mean, the track had a men's competition this morning with 53 sleds. We've had 20 powered sleds in between, and uh, now we've got the team competition, and we've seen some very fast, quick times. So congratulations to the Ice Meisters and the track crew for providing some great ice here all week. First slider on the ice is 19-year-old ballet dancer Yulia Kanakino. She comes to Skeleton from the most left-field sporting choice in the world. 5.36 get away from her, very young, and hasn't got much sliding experience behind her, but she's clearly tweaking. When she came into the headshot shoot, and we asked everybody your favorite athlete and what sport background when you came from, and she goes, ballet. We all did what? <laughs> we double take on it, but she's diminutive in size, almost like a gymnast. What is that fast twitch fibrous that the gymnasts and dancers need, and that works well for athletes. 87.6 kilometers an hour is 54 and a half. We saw her in the Lake Placid and the Calgary World Cups, and then she went back to the Europa Cup ICC tour. Maria Orlova came out and placed her on the World Cup Tour, won the first event she was in at Altenburg. Maria Orlova goes for the other Russian team. She'll be coming up with a few sleds. 21-0 at the bottom, and a 59-86 slide. Well, after their lead-out mount, Sergei Tudorov popped the groove at the start, the sled, sled skittering all over the place. I'm afraid the team instantly consigned to being last. And then a mistake for Great Britain's bobsleigh driver, Victoria Ole, put them down at the tail of the field as well. Look at the very good athleticism. Look here, her gait looks like she's definitely athletic. Look at her knees come up and the turnover and drive. Watch her jump onto the slide. Now you think a ballet dancer would have some good flexibility and I think she's coming in from an angle, but we'll give her some good points for that landing. I don't think they cheat, uh, touch the, uh, teach that in the ballet Robert, but... I'm sure her pas de deux and her plies are just as elegant. So the Russians lead then. And next up comes Team Great Britain, Laura Dees. Now she will be fast on the start here and a great opportunity to try and push Britain back up the leaderboard. Go! Laura Dees from Wrexham included, the 26 year old at St. David's Day today, the patron saint of Wales. So it's her national day. Women's bobsledders for Britain had some problems in curve zero. They couldn't get through without banging hard, and that's why the Brits are down there. Dominic Parsons left them in the top four yep. in the first discipline. The first it's going to be a long yeah. way back. 1.4 ahead of Russia, too. Good start by Laura Dees. I think she's medaled a couple times in the World Cup this year. Yep. One thing that's pretty obvious, she's a very good athlete. And her sport background, not ballet like the Russian slider we just saw, she's from equestrian. So she is. We have some two different athletic backgrounds and the last two sliders coming down the track. Yeah, the helmet scraping on the ice as well as lots of tape on the chin piece of her helmet. Really chattering away there through the high G corners at the bottom. Five Gs there. Whoa. Vicky holding on. Help me out here. 59-14, yeah. good time. That's pretty quick. That is. <laughs> yeah. Thank you. Vicky Ole and There's it a good example on your photo. of the team competition. Say, boy, yeah. help me out. Yeah. Pick me up. Yeah. That's pretty cool. Well, the two skeleton sliders have certainly helped Team Great Britain. Start. Good run by Laura Deese. Feet not perfectly together here. She's way down. I would got to believe she's going to come way back up. And as you said, Martin, her chin was dragging a lot. We heard a lot of scratching going on. Well, the way her head's tucked in, it almost her visor scratching on the eyes there. Her head is so low. So there's Laura Deese. Off to the leader's box. And next up is Romania. So the Romanians in eighth position after the first two disciplines. This is 23-year-old Maria Matsulu. And she's really started to find the speed to unlock what she needs on these tracks. This season has been a big year for her. She's had a good coming out this year. Launches herself onto the sled. She's going to get the, the Romanians. Romanians got a four-tenths lead. And I would be very surprised if 
They're not the leaders of the ball. Well, she started 900 slower, so lost nearly a tenth of that already. She's going to lose more here. Now to 32. That's not bad. Stops the bleeding at the next clock. She keeps it at 20 to 2,500 in the exit chrysal. She's got a chance to be the leader at the bottom. Letting it flow nice 20. and smoothly. Speed's not what Laura had. It's 89-2 to 88-2. Boy, she really used too much of the chrysal there. Could be down to a tenth of a second, maybe less. There you go, tenth, just like you said, Martin. Down ten. 123.4 at the bottom is the far speed so far. What's she got? Down to nice, is right to the hundred. Ooh, too close to the call. She'll still be in the lead by two or three hundreds at the line. Seven. Seven hundreds. She managed to hold that last corner together. The Romanians are just so... Uh. They're all wearing those Sanaya patches from the old track in Romania. I like to talk about the Romanians were a power in the sport. I think they might be coming to spring a few surprises again. Good athleticism here. Look at the way her hand comes forward like a sprinter. Look at this. Now the cross, look at her hand coming up, just like a sprinter. Look at the form, her hand's perfectly forward. Now the crossover, now this is technique. And look at the athleticism here. Look at the flex. That might be the best landing on a sled we've seen yet. Her hips yeah. were going a little to the right of picture oh. there. As you see her bounce. bounce up. But 900 yeah. slower than Laura Dees, who is one of the fastest starters, starters in the field. The That's really impressive from Maria Matsalou. Well, now here's a, a woman who's had a stunning season. World Cup champion, Janine Flock of Austria. Still 25 years old, still yeah! improving with every race. Last year, the European champion. This year, the World Cup Crystal Globe came her way. She won a gold medal in the Palm France. It was the first woman skeleton gold medal from Austria ever. And of course, she went on to win the World Cup title with a nail biter in Sochi. Oh, yeah. And uh, she made it hard on us and hard on herself. And it's what the sport needed. They need Austria to return to prominence in this sport. Austria men had four of the 10 world championships in the 90s. They were the dominant power in the sport back when the sport was fledging. And, and so it's good to see Austria return, especially next year, because they're hosting the world championships. Pulling away from the Romanians, quarter of a second up. The sport six tenths up. Wow. Speed really good here. Look at her form. Her feet are together. Boy. She's two and a half kilometers wow. an hour quicker than Laura Dees in Great Britain. The Austrians. Flock. What a run. This might be a good insight into what's going to happen next week. Wow. Janine Flock just delivered the goods for Austria right there. Wow. That World Cup championship victory was a nail biter, but boy, has she carried on her success into this World Championships. What a good run. No wonder there's the smile. Look at the form. We didn't hear any scratching. Look at the feet. Boy, she was flying. The speeds. I got to believe she had the best speed in the bottom part of the track. Easily. Look at that form. And then the crossover here from 11 to 12, to 11, 10 to 11. Boy, she made it look easy. She was nearly three kilometers an hour quicker than anyone so far. Austria lead then, and the fifth of our teams is USA 2. And this is Megan Henry. Now, Megan has not ever started a World Cup race. We're from Roxbury, Connecticut, 27 year old rookie. World Cup debut, first time we've seen her. Like the helmet, though. She's had a couple of decent results here. She's been on the podium on this track before, I think she said. So 5-4-0. She won a push-up against all the other US athletes. So Grant, Savannah Grable and the others, they'll be watching back home. She's 40 up, now she's like 23 up. That's all a little relative to the start. 5-4-0. Oh, down a to three. This is, they've lost four tenths on this run so far. Again, very different from the snow in Francis. Ooh, a little skiddy. She's lost seven tenths now. So she's gonna, the USA is going to fall back two or three spots here. The USA two sled, or a team team, six full second back. So they can only look on. Megan Henry makes her debut at them. Oh, she lost 1.4 seconds. USA only fell one spot. They should feel lucky there. 
They lost 1.4 seconds on that run. That shows you, as you talked about, the, how the skeleton podium swings. Yeah. It's, uh, two years ago, the, the well, Pika's pace had an 80 hundreds lead in the woman's skeleton part of the competition, which solidified the USA gold. Let's, let's watch her hop onto the sled and see what kind of form she's got. Pretty good, pretty quiet. Like the helmet. Yeah, great looking helmet. A little turn there to get on a curve zero, drags her toes. Well, showing all the body elements there, head, shoulders, knees, and toes helping her steer. Look at the ice. They're going to weigh her. Zach Lund, the coach with the sled. So five sleds down, Austria leading now. The US have slipped down into second place. Five sleds still to come here. Elizabeth Arce, World Cup rookie, World Cup points leader at Christmas, a winner on home ice in Calgary. What a standout season this young side had. I expect her to blister a run right here. She's, this is her style track. She's on a Bromley sled like Don Parsons, 539 getaway. Silver in last year's Junior Worlds, and look at this. Half a second up, but the gap is coming down a little. This track is a little bit like Calgary, in my opinion. Very easy to get down, very demanding for gliding. And this is what Vace did when she won in Calgary. She had a silver medal in Lake Placid, the first two events. Then in Altenburg, she hurt herself, had to take the next week off in Kortensu, and then resumed with another medal. So she's had a great breakout season. No one can touch the speed of Janine Flock. 93.9 there. Janine Flock was 95.3 and had 126.8 at the bottom. I mean, Janine Flock was going bobsleigh speed. Elizabeth Arce, second Still. fastest run. Still did well. Janine Flock. This, uh, this Richard Bromley. Yeah, Janine Flock really turned around the Austrian team's fortunes. They're only 1,200s behind fifth placed Canada after this run. Vachi asked us to do a new headshot this week for her. We just had to readjust her old one. Mamrita's here as well with the cookies. Down up on nine. She flopped it out of here a little bit, a little late. She got into a nine on a little bit incorrect line, and then she's late here. See if she skids in the. Ice trough here, the shoot between nine and ten. Not bad. She, 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 boy, she really let. She did not steer hardly there at all. Trying to keep the speed on board down at the bottom. Elizabeth Vache. Next up, Annie O'Shea from Port Jefferson Station, New York. So this is Team USA one, fourth place after the first two disciplines. What can the 27-year-old do for them? A lot of pressure on Andy to deliver here. Again, it's going to come down to uh, Holcomb next to have a chance to win a medal, but she's going to have to take care of keeping the green numbers, keep the U.S. with a chance. Good first corner speed, 61-6. Five-tenths lead. That's a lot of time. But we just saw the other U.S. said maybe Henry lose about a second on the way down. 4,200. 40, Whoa, 88.5. Janine Flock there had 90.4 kilometers an hour. This is going to be the 20s right here. 19. Boy, the U.S. Both the U.S. sleds just lost so much time. It's not them. It's Janine Flock has found so much time. I think that's the drama. Canada the leaders at the moment in the lower box. Canada USA be one the leader. at the top. They well, it's going to be very close. 14 under his back. They pick off their North American rivals. Well, it was the USA favored to win, have a chance to win a medal, but uh, against the Russians, now it's going to be Canada. It's going to be too much of a deficit for Holcomb to overcome. Annie O'Shea coming down with the third fastest run. Well, no, beg your pardon, the fifth fastest run. Yeah. She comes down in third place. This is the top of the track. Head down. It looks like she's drifting to the wrong side of that straightaway. Look at the other runner marks away left of there. Look at those eyes. Of course, lots of them have come from the earlier bobsleigh race. However, the USA have dropped from fourth place to second, a uh, third rather, with three to go. So they could end up down in six spots. So it's all about the medal positions now. We're jockeying almost halfway through the competition. Oh, no! 
Germans looking dominant. And in this third leg, Tina Herman, the 22-year-old 2010 Junior World Champion, the runner-up in the World Cup this year. 5.56, well, that leaves her a lot of work to do. She's Three. had some breakout season. One she World has. Cup medal, Calgary, and she was never on the podium again, and she had a chance almost to win the World Cup title. She had a chance almost every weekend. Number fourth she had was ridiculous. She was within a few inches of being the World Cup champion in her rookie season. 8,300. She she's, might lose back a tenth or something. She's already looking up the margin on Canada. She was 7,500 up when she laid oh, yeah, down. She's up to right nine tenths. This is what the Germans want from German sliders on German ice. This 95 is, kilometers an hour. And what the Germans got coming up on this team, I think it's... Look at Kathleen Martini on the right. Come on, come on, Tina, do it for us. You know who they yeah. got it? You know who the anchor leg is for them? A guy named Francisco Friedrich. Well, the world champion, not yeah. Francesco Friedrich. Yeah. So, I think the Germans have just solidified themselves with a great chance to win a medal. Germany won, if not a goal. That was some run. Yes, that was. That was a great run from Tina Herman, immediately flagging herself up and shortening her rods for the World Championships next week. Look at her hands. Look at the sprinter. Just like a sprinter technique here. Well, this is off a 5.56 start. Yeah, she's That's not a great two starter. tenths of a second out of being competitive. Well, she's not a great starter. Her mentor is Marion Thies, who was never a good starter, but had the best gliding position in the world of anybody. And Marion's watching just above the finish area. If you look up the top, you see the green flags. That's where Marion Thies is. Now, to stay in mental contention for Russia 1, Maria Oliver, and again, the one thing that was lacking from her armament, consistency, that's what she brought to the table this year. Well, they got three-tenths lead. This is a World Cup winner in Altenburg. Very comfortable slider. See, she's sliding with a black armband on in memory of the Russian bobsleigh coach. 3,200 up. She's pulling away from Tina Herman. That takes some doing after Herman's performance. Well, this could be a telltale sign. One of the favorite. Ooh, she's got a 14 there. Gaps halved. 88-6. Herman and the other German, uh, and Mar uh, Janine Flock, they in the 90s. She's already lost it. So she's going to fall back at least one spot here. You can't well, see him falling back behind her. The Canadians are 1.2 seconds adrift. She's not going to go that far back. Or is she? 2,600 is back, 124 kilometers an hour at the bottom. Okay, there's a head scratcher for Coach Billy Schneider. The one thing that she didn't have there was any speed at all once she lay down on the sled. She went from nearly she, three tenths up to her over four hands. tenths back. You saw her moving her hands like that. That was her so That was, that was not her. That was not her. She wasn't happy with that. Look at that. Well, they lie second, so they are still in the medal position with the anchor leg to go. But boy, the chance for gold might just have slipped away. What about Anya Huber? What can she do? The 2008 world champion in women's skeleton, Anya Huber Selbach. And this is going to be her last hurrah. We've seen Kathleen Martini slide for the last time. Next weekend, we will see Anya Huber Selbach slide for the last time. Her last team event. And this is a great medal position for her. Well, first. <laughs> Definitely is. She's got the goods to keep them right in contention, even if they're not leading. They've got the world bobsleigh champion coming up as the anchor leg. I think the odds are good. Oh, no, 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 no. The odds of German 1-2 are looking pretty reasonable as well. Germany lead at the moment. What can Annie Huber sell back produce? 5.46. That's not an uncompetitive start. It's one tenth away from the very fastest. Normal for her. She used to be the best starter when she won the World Championships in Altenburg in 2008. She won a lot of World Cups for being the best athlete in the field. But since then, women's skeleton has matured where there's a lot of athletes with better start times. Now to put her team into the lead, all she's got to do is outperform to Herman. Oh, but she's not the big skid. She's doing it almost to zero. You heard that skid on the exit of 5-6 into the Chrysler. You heard the sound. And now it's red up. It's going to be two tenths back. Oh, now it's about dealing with the Russians. Herman.
Norman had 95 kilometers an hour. And Johannes Lochner will anchor this team. He just finished with a silver medal in the World Championships. 124, Herman was 127 at the bottom. Wow, she fell back two places, so now the Russians go ahead of them. Wow. Well, gives Johannes Lochner plenty to do anyway, doesn't it? Yeah, so that pretty locks in those three teams. You got Germany one, Russia one, and Germany too. Two. Canadians, Austrians, Six and back. Americans are looking on the outside. They're going to need a miracle to get a hold of that podium. Well, the German leaders have got the world champion. Anja Hubeselbach's team have got the world silver medalist in their men's bobsleigh leg. It's going to be pretty interesting for that silver and bronze. Well, it was all good at the start. She was in contention. Look at the hands. Like a sprinter. Oh, but she looked a little rough there. Don't like her energy. Her hands should be coming straight up like a sprinter. Seems like a lot of energy is coming out here. This, this pendulum swing extension. is good. Yeah, that's a great stride. But boy, her feet are running behind each other. Of course, it's so easy to criticize when we're watching 700 uh, frame second motion here. It's what pictures. So it's Germany, Russia, oh, and Germany oh, oh. as it was before the skeleton leg, but. Tina Herman may just have helped talk her team into a gold medal on the first day of her competitive action here in Winterberg, Germany. It's Germany one that leads. Tina Herman, fastest in the women's skeleton leg. Yeah, her anchor is Francisco Friedrich. So if I'm a betting man, I like Germany's one's position. Germany won lead by nearly half a second. It might be a battle over for the gold medal. In fact, I said Tina Herman was the fastest of all. She wasn't. Janine Flock was the fastest of all. 58-44 slide compared to 58-56 of Tina Herman. So Janine Flock way quicker than anybody else. Only one other slider got below a 59. No, no other sliders got down uh, below 59. I beg your pardon, no. Elizabeth Varche, 58.85. She was second quickest. So it was uh, a tough leg for the women's skeleton. Little pause now while we reset the field and get all the men's bobsleighs into position. And of course, until the last slider goes down, John, actually they don't know which order the starting order is going to be, although we could pretty much have assumed who was going to be last, so therefore first onto the ice. That was the Russians who had that disaster in the men's skeleton leg. Glühwein stands still doing good business down there in the Kreisel. That's a great viewing very, area. Very comfortable, very comfortable area. But the Aussies there, Dean Timmings and... <laughs> What's going on with that? I'm not going out there uh, pitching themselves up there. John Farrell on the right, Dean Timmings on the left. He and his twin brother sliding skeleton for Australia. And there's Cody Baskew watching on from the sidelines. Nikki McSweeney, one of the British break women. Here we go, we're manipulating the sleds around in a finish area as well. Got to get them all weighed and measured. Debbie, our floor manager there, trying to nail Jello to the ceiling. Still lots of fans. Recognize that face in the white hat? We're seeing him in competition in the four-man. Manny Mahara. We won't be seeing him in competition, but we'll be seeing him around in the four-man competition. Manny Mahata raced in the last World Championships for Germany and has since ended his career. <laughs> Top of the track, Winterberg in Germany. The team's competition in the BMW FIBT World Championships. Fourth discipline is men's bobsleigh. Germany one leading the competition at the moment. World champion Francesco Friedrich anchors them. Germany two looking for a medal. Johannes Lochner, the silver medalist, will go for them. And Russia one also in medal contention. Alexander Kazinov had a horror story in the two-man contest. Can he set that to rights? Well, lots of fans still on hand here at this Hochsauerland track in Winterberg, Germany. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the action. And as ever, they go from last, Russia 2, down to fast. And that will be Germany 1, whose anchormen will take the final leg. The world champion crowned earlier today in the two-man 
looking for another World Championship gold medal. That's the entertainment the team's competition brings to you. Other athletes, other competitors, and lots of fans watching at the top of the track. Men's skeleton first, then we had women's bobsled, then we had women's skeleton. Now we start with men's bobsled, and the Russians go first because their skeleton got shooting off. He came out of the start grooves and had a disastrous two seconds behind at the bottom. Alexander Kashinov of Russia has been their lead box day driver all year. He finished third of their three sleds in 15th in the two-man competition. An unmitigated weather nightmare for him, as it was for a number of others. He comes up late. He's going up now. Is the, he's going to try and give... They have a chance to move up. But boy, it's a reach. The sound, the echo. The sleds make a little bit more noise than the skeleton sleds. And if Chudnov didn't come out of the blocks, I bet you this kid would be fourth or fifth position minimum. Yeah, Alexei still left 11th in the two-man. Yeah, he was the better of the Russian time. Yeah, he was the best of the lot of every trip. Yeah, no, yes, Alexandrianov, in fact, turned out to be the fastest, didn't he? Yeah. So still left in second place. Trying to find some pace down at the bottom. 133.2, good speed. Into the finish, threw it down, 55.96. Not bad. <laughs> Look at those times from this morning. And that's that's not a bad time. Yep. The track record stands at 55.23. That's fastest he's been down. I don't know what he got in his fourth heat, but he didn't match that in the first three heats. So uh, the track still has some time left in it. Curve 10. Look at the runners. Good line out of 10. Brakeman buried in there as expected. Oh, Sigh <laughs> of so relief from Alex, who's still left. Third trip down the track today. All takes it out of you. Well, next up for Great Britain, Lamin Dean with Simeon Williamson again. They had two runs this morning in the two man competition. Slipped down from a 12th place on Friday, down into 15th spot at the end of the contest. 14th spot, I beg your pardon. They crushed the wall and curve zero in the. One heat and problems out of curve nine and the other. Ross oh, Eben, the top ten. Well, Simeon Williamson new to the lineup this year. 33-year-old Manchester Grenadier guardsman. Lamindine has hoped for a better run through corner one. He gets it. No way that he can lose two seconds unless he crashes. But he got through the hassle curve. There's zero curve, no problems. And again, his nemesis, the rest of the track has been down to curve nine. Let's see what he does here on a four. Very nice. Speed a little lower than Stormev at the start. Now he's starting to find more speed, but losing ground to the Russian. Of course, that means the chances of catching Romania in front of them shrink. Oh, boys, late at nine. Watch out here. Quite comfortable through there again. He's parked it a couple of times in training during the season. There's the British team at the top, the Russians at the bottom, the leaders. But Great Britain still in green numbers all the way to the line. He lost some time back, about 20 hundreds, but whether or not they're going to move up, we'll find out. Hold on, ladies. So 56 48 final slide, but unhappy with the mistakes there, Lamin Dean. That was a better run than his, either one of his third or fourth runs in the competition this morning. Watch the exit. Oh boy, the, when you see the cowling split like that, this is before eight to nine. He doesn't like curve nine. He's not the only one. <laughs> it has its challenges. Not as rough, rough and ready as it has been in the past, but still not easy to get through with the speed you need. Next up for Romania. Well, this is 29-year-old Dorin Gregore, 25-year-old Florin, Florin Kratzuin behind him. 32nd in the two-man contest. They didn't go through into the fourth and final heat, so this is actually only their second trip down the hill of the day. So tell you the difference between the two. Ooh, only a hundredth of a second. So I got to believe the British are going to be the leaders here at the bottom, unless the can find some magic way to get down the track quicker than they did in this morning's competition. 62.5, first corner speed, pretty much identical to Team Great Britain, and the times are tied. Still in green numbers. 
favourites had 93-3 at turn 9, 93-0, the Romanians very close. 200, 100, 200, now it's red numbers. Yeah, it's, this sled is a lot older than Lamont Dean, so let's see how he gets you nine better than Lamont Dean, so... The speed might come back to him then, Lamont Dean only 132 at the bottom. That's nine, so the Brits are going to move up here one spot. Well, that's what you want. One. That's exactly what Lamin Dean wanted, 56-7 slide for Dorian Gregore. So Great Britain stay in the leader's box. Romania in second place. They will still beat one of the two Russian teams. Competition. Good job, guys. Romanians always bring it all every day. Tap before the Kreisel. That means he goes into that corner where you want to exit out with a slingshot effect. He's going to go off to steer a couple times in there and lose his momentum. Maria Constantin, the women's box leader, Dorian Veliku down, helping with the sled. As Nick Cunningham now sets off on the anchor leg. With James Reed, born and bred in Garmisch Partenkirch, and the 23 year old break man. Cunningham from Monterey, California. Boise State. Top US driver in the two man contest. He finished in 12th. That's how bad a week it's been for US bobsledding, for the men at least. Start time. Nice load yeah. from then, 5.27. Pretty similar to this morning's time. Oh. That might have been his best start of the four heats. And the competition for a different break, but. Yeah, fresh legs. Alex Harrison went with him this morning. So he's not really worried about the of the British. He's got a half second lead. He's going to pull away. He's got Steve Holcomb coming up next, his teammate. He puts some pushes right down. And maybe someone else will make a mistake. He's pulling away as expected. 100 kilometers now at the bottom. That's very good, good speed, speed for the BMW sled. Track's got some time. Speed left in it. Boy, he's really flying. This is the best of the bobsled men so far by a lot. Wow, 55, 90. I don't know if he went that fast in the competition. Well, there's the US girls. Larking about in the leader's box. Kyle Tress with them, Jamie Grubel Poser, Lauren Gibbs, and Megan Henry. I'm guessing it was the bobsledders lifting the skeleton athlete rather than the other way around. Yeah, he didn't have any time like that. At 56.05, he had in the 38 this morning. 55.90, but he's been his best heat of the day. Yeah, it looks like it as well. Big smile on his face. He's starting to unlock the secrets of this track. Oh, set him up good for Formula. Look at the runner tips. Mr. Hill's buried back there perfectly. Now, we don't have a margin of error to how far in front Mr. the Reed, next excuse. team are. Yeah, James Reed. But this is bragging rights, essentially, between the Americans. They're not going to win. They're not going to get medals. What they want to be is better than their rivals in the same uniform. Stephen Holcomb with Adrian Adams behind him. The Jet. Called. He's in and down. And 531, just 400s back. But boy, he's got a nine tenths lead over their teammates. And I don't think Steve Holcomb's going to give away nine tenths. The jet assisted takeoff got them close to the star time of Nick Cunningham. Oh, big steer right there out of curve three to four. Big steer from Holcomb, and he taps again out of four. Sorry. <laughs> Wow, seven tenths of a second down from nine tenths of a second. So he's dropped 1400 hundreds already. But boy, Holcomb had the 10th best time of the third run. He pulled himself from 21 to 17. Did do very well the fourth run. Speed's not quite as good, but it'll be enough, surely, to keep him in the leader's box. USA 2 will be on top for just a few more seconds. And USA 1 move into the lead, courtesy of Stephen Holcomb. 56-11, third best time in this discipline. Scheimer, not very happy on the right, he knows that. And there won't be a medal today for the United States and something nope. crazy happens in our next couple sleds. Well, toss away the two-man week. <laughs> Boys boosting up Adrian Adams there. So USA 2 get the bragging rights, so USA 1 get the bragging rights rather over USA 2. We're going to steer off the curve here. Bang, before the take on, to the, into the finish. 
Let's watch any spray come up here in the back. He had a skid uh, and then the tail hits tail. the wall and that knocks it the wrong way. It, the tail's going right, left when it should be uh, following the, the nose. Stephen Holcomb of the USA puts USA 1 into the lead with five sleds still to go. Martin Haven and John Morgan watching the team's competition arrive at its conclusion. Fastest five teams still to go. Austria trying to battle to stay in front of the USA and maybe grab a medal. Well, USA one at the bottom. 20-year-old Benny Meyer, the driver with uh, young brakeman Christian Smetana, a late replacement on the back of the sled. So they had an injury issue this morning. And he's just set himself up for four men. Oh, he's falling behind. You know, you would expect on a straight-up battle, Hope and Meyer. You would expect Hope to win it. They were only a couple of hundreds in front after the first heat. Holcomb had 100.3 kilometers an hour there. Well, Janine Flock put this Austrian team in contention. She had the best time on the woman's skeleton part. And she... Benny Meyer's not a doing chance. a bad job. He's limiting the damage, maybe two tenths. All right, quarter second back and still in second place. There's your leaders, Team USA 1. Still a good run, though. They're happy with that. Benny Meyer, young 20-year-old driver. That's had a great year of three top 10 four-man finishes for a 20-year-old. That's pretty good. And the start. His brakeman there, they, he, we saw his brakeman compete in a couple of the World Cups this year yep. as a driver. And that's the other brakeman. This is Christian Smetana. He hasn't started driving yet. Marcus Sammer, the other brakeman, oh, yes, who other was brakeman. scheduled to start today. So I wonder whether it's a weight issue, whether Sammer has, has, is not well. Didn't catch it. It was a very late change, about half an hour before race time. So Marcus Sammer, yeah, he's driving two man. So USA one lead with four to go. Next up, well, we've had the battle of the Americans. Now it's the battle of the Americas. North American battle between USA one and Canada. But Canada about a quarter second in front. This is an angry Canadian team, Justin Cripps. Yeah. He was great all week long in training, had a bad draw. Self-induced and uh, didn't make the top 20 for the final run. And I was betting on him for a top six, top seven finish. 5-16, a great start from Justin Woods in Canada. No one had a bigger disadvantage than he did going off one. Boy, they got I'm sure when he ended up seeing himself in 29th to 30th place, he did the first team. He would just want to pack up the bags and go home. Stayed with it, almost stuck it, only missed the top 20 by 200 to the second. We've got 25 year old Alexander Kopacz on the break, so more fresh legs, 99.7, that's decent speed, not quite as quick as the best. But he will leave Canada in the leader's box, surely. Kaylee Humphreys and, and Kate O'Brien in the middle, dead breathe, but they lead. Now the question is, is that enough to threaten somebody? for a medal. In the realistic world, probably, probably not. not, but, but we've, already seen, things. we've already seen two of our 10 teams have nightmares at the start. Things happen on ice. Yeah. Especially this curve zero up here. Watch these two guys get in, set. And if there's ever gonna be a, watch the arms come up. Oh, the left arm, Cripps is perfect. Alec Kopsak, he's, he's got some hooks on him. Yes, he does. He gets in nicely. That's a javelin throw, right? No jammers in the first corner. Olympic champion Kaylee Humphreys humping the sled around. It's all glamour in bobsleigh, you know. Three to go. Now it's medals time. Canada lead, but realistically, they need a big helping hand from either a world champion or a world champion silver medalist. In the background there in the yellow jacket, Martin uh, Kropot, who won the uh, silver medal behind this German... Johannes Lochner, 24 year old from Berchtesgaden. Garden. Gregor Bombach, veteran of the team for many years. Also now from Berchtesgaden, Garden, a 33 year old. Looking for another medal. start. Wow. Good start. Boy, good, excellent curve. Zero. Boy, this young kid just performed at a high level today.
second best time in the final run. All the pressure you could think he want on you in his first world championships, and he delivered a silver medal. Wow, little mistake there, though. Talks him after as he said, I am so amazed we did not think we'd be in the medals. Well, seven tenths for you, so I think this, this is a question of what color medal is he going to drag himself to? Because the Russians are coming up next. Say that silver medal is secure yet for them. Right? i got to say you're right. Of course, I'm correcting myself. It was Joshua Bloom behind him who took the silver medal. Wow. This is a really nice looking run again. 132.2 at the bottom. Great run. Canadian, there's a, at least a bronze medal for that German team right there. Yeah. They're going to go congratulate their young teammate who they all participated in at least a bronze medal right there. And they're going to, this is the team event. This is what the team event presents right here. Make yep. sure a Bob, Skeleton, Women's, everybody, hey, it's, a, it's pretty cool. Great camaraderie. Yes, it is. And this is some great camaraderie with uh, Lochner in the sled right here. I mean, boy, was he perfect in the final run today to deliver a silver medal for Germany. He's a 24-year-old. I think he's still pitching himself. Yeah. Parents, we had dinner. I had dinner right next to his parents last night. This is Uncle Rudy won the Olympic silver medal in Albertville in 92 as a driver. Now, here's Alexander Kazinov's chance to redeem himself after a horrible time with the weather in the two-man competition. 15th place, the worst no. Russian sled, which is not no. what you would have expected, either of those facts. He's going to give up some time to the start. The Russians had a 515, or the Germans did. 534, so Ooh, it's, going to be, it's going to be red number zero real quick, and it's going to be 20 hundreds probably the next clock. The Germans started 515, he gave away two times at the start. He's, 16, he's, probably gonna he's bleed. never getting that back, not against Johannes Lochner. He's going to bleed 10 more hundreds before he stops. Well, you know I said how the Canadians needed a helping hand? The Canadians are 74 hundreds behind. I don't think that's going to happen. Well, he's already two tenths down. He's going to stop the bleeding right here. Watch this, 25, 22. Yeah, stop the bleeding. All so right. he might eat back with the he might get down to 16 or 17. It'd be a, this will be at least a, probably a bronze medal for the Russians. It's probably the 16. He's bringing it back. Look second at this. silver medal of the day off. coming up. Getting some confidence back. Look at that down to nine. Whoa. Hey, hey the guy with a two tenths deficient start brings that back to only 900 at the bottom. Watch out for him next weekend in the format. Well, he had great speed as well. 133.8 at the bottom. Johannes Lochner only 132.2. It's a few spots of rain down there now. Now, different brakemen. Do they all, they looks like they hit off pretty well. Synchronize that start. Yeah. Now watch his feet get up and over the cowling. What type of move? Oh, that was a quick one. He might have been better keeping Kirill Antuk in the sled instead of uh, subbing in Ilva Hootsin. Look at the size of the hooks with the yeah. brake, but no. He, did not, he wasn't that cohesive with both them arms coming over together. Well, one of them was slapping his visor closed. So, Germany lead, Russia second. Germany are going to take the gold medal, but will it be Germany two or will it be the world champion, Francesco Friedrich? Germany won. Martin Grotkop was the name Ooh, I was struggling it. for. Breaking a little problem with the Ooh, twisting and skid. Skid right before they got a lot of time in the bank. 65 hundreds over their teammates. This is almost like a victory. Well, I'm not sure the last time anybody won two gold medals in the same couple of hours, but he's on target of a 513 start, which is a rocket ship getaway. Speed is not quite as high as his teammates. A hundred kilometers an hour at the bottom for their teammates, so the gap is coming down. But again, like in Francesco's last run, it doesn't matter. 43 hundreds up. He's not going to give that away. 132.5 at the bottom. Goal for Germany. Goal for Germany. Silver for Germany. They've gone one-two in the two-man. They go one-two in the team competition as well. And this time. No Latvian team to tie for the silver. Germany won two, Russia in third place, ahead of Canada, the USA, and Austria. Well, his teammates swamping around him. 
as the double world champion now becomes a triple world champion. Francesco Friedrich, twice the two-man world champion, and today, just a couple of hours after adding that second world championship title, he claims a third. There's a year gap between his two world championships because he had one in the pre-Olympic season 2013. Of course, there is no world championships in the Olympic season. Martin Gropkop on the back of the sled with Francesco Friedrich. And he claims the team gold medal. Alex Jung, the junior world champion in men's skeleton. Kathleen Martini and Lizette Turner in Martini's last ever slide. And there's a great story. Tina Herman missed out on the World Cup Crystal Globe in women's skeleton by the blink of an eye. She takes a world championship gold. And Francesco Friedrich from Piana in Germany, close to the Altenburg track, anchors Germany one to the gold medal victory with Martin Grotkopf behind him. There is how they finished. 1-2, Germany going gold and silver for the second time here on the first World Championship Sunday in Winterberg. Well, nearly time to give the voice box a rest after a busy week of action. But the Germany one and Germany two result is exactly what their coaches would have hoped for. They produced the goods when they needed to. A little bit of drizzle to end the afternoon. They won't care much. Francesco Friedrich and Torsten Margis claiming the World Championship two-man gold. Francesco Friedrich with Martin Grotkop, one of the other break men in the team, anchoring Germany one to victory. Germany two in second place. So Anja schneider Heinze gets another silver medal. And to round out her career, Kathleen Martini becomes a world champion again. She was the world champion in women's bobsleigh in 2011. And she is the world team's champion in 2015. And that, with a gold medal around her neck, is a great way to end a big, big career as a bobsledder. And there is Kathleen Martini, Lizette Turner alongside, looking very happy and rightly so. John Morgan marshalling the troops. As we will get back and hear from them in just a little while. Fans heading down to watch the flower ceremony and then into town. The medals will be presented in a big party tent in the center square in Winterberg this evening. This town has really put itself out to host the World Championships and to make it big, interesting, exciting and special. And they so far have done a great job. A little bit of drizzle sweeping across Winterberg in the Hochsauerland of Germany. The BMW FIBT Team World Championships won by the German one team. And Germany two in second spot ahead of Russia one. Canada, the USA and Austria rounding out the top half dozen. Ahead of USA two, Great Britain, Romania and Russia. So Russia two never recovering from their first leg. So Gay Chudinov having a nightmare as the sled broke free at the start. Great Britain's women bobsledders uh, hitting the wall in the first term, but they fought back to claw themselves over the Romanians. But it's been a double gold Sunday for 24-year-old Francesco Friedrich from Piana near Altenburg, anchoring Germany one to the gold. Well, bronze medal. And I know all the Russian bobsledders and skeleton athletes will be thrilled that their team are on the podium and have won medals on behalf of one of their coaches who sadly passed away very unexpectedly last night. Alexander Sheglovsky will be much missed, a senior figure in the Russian bobsled setup. And Germany, gold and silver in the two-man competition earlier on this afternoon, go gold and silver in the team as well, Shane. They got strength in depth. No flowers for Anya Huber Selbach. Oh, there must be some somewhere. Look, there's a lady with spare flowers, Anya. To me, to me. 
<laughs> so the money shot for the photographers, flowers, <laughs> Schneidy sharing the flowers. Kathleen Martini looking very happy with that. Tina Herman too. I'm not sure the podium's going to take too much of that, Gregor Burnback. If you wouldn't mind stopping, that would be great for the organisers. Well, Germany won strong competition all the way through. Junior world champion Axel Jung leading them off and the Francesco Friedrich finishing it off. Let's hear then from our top three. John Morgan is with them now. Okay, Team Russia, bronze medal today on a very tough day, but a great performance from everybody, Maria. Спасибо большое за поддержку, и мы эту медаль посвящаем Александру Щегловскому. Yep, they're doing this in memory of the coach. Still a great bronze medal. Congratulations to Russia. Thank you. Now, over to silver medal for Germany. And Anya, you're, not your last race, but a nice team competition silver medal for your team. It's always fun doing the team race, and uh, thanks for the guys and girls. Uh, they did a great job. My run was not so good, but at the end, we uh, came in second, and so I think we're all happy, aren't we? Yeah! yeah. Enjoy the moment. Thanks. See you next weekend. Okay, Kathleen Martini, we will allow you. Now this is your last run. Now you can officially say you have left with a gold medal in the team competition. <laughs> oh, yeah, that's great. Now I'm done. What is, it's good end for us. <laughs> Women both, it's a good start. <laughs> that's good <laughs> team for next week. And it's a great day for Francesco with two championships medals and uh, yeah it's a great event all the time and uh, i hope that uh, the team event it's maybe getting olympic congratulations francisco nice day <laughs> francesco frigic two gold medals around his neck today well congratulations to all our podium finishes another highly entertaining entertaining team competition hard to follow but fun to watch that's it then from John Morgan and me, Martin Haven, on behalf of the whole FIBT TV team crew here. Thank you for being with us for this team competition. Don't forget, we've got another whole week of World Championship action coming from Winterberg in Germany. We'll see you for that. Until then, our feed is in, and goodbye.